I did not bully, tease them. We spoke uh, to Joseph, who says he's I Hispanic. Did. I was confused why they uh, were detaining him and not me. I even offered to get detained when I was on the couch. I, I put my hands up like this and I said, you guys could detain me. But she, um, she said, no, because you were calm. Both officers are under investigation. My job should simply be to apologize to you, the viewer, because I'm bringing you the story way late. You see, this fight occurred a few weeks ago now at the Bridgewater Commons Mall in New Jersey, and I'm sorry, but I must have missed an update about Joseph, the 15-year-old who was not arrested, saying Bridgewater police officers were plain old racist when they detained the other boy and not him. And y'all, come on. For real. Y'all. The teenager knows what's going on. Y'all. Joseph, who has been a victim of death threats since the incident and has had to tell people that he's not white, partially because he has lighter skin and clearly for getting preferential treatment by the police, also said that the officers told him that Kai, the black eighth grader, was being detained because he was resisting arrest. So if he was getting arrested for resisting arrest, what was the first arrest? Y'all. I should also apologize to the managers and producers here at TYT. It would appear that I'm recording a video of me just saying y'all and looking pensive at the camera. I'm sorry. So let's switch gears and briefly talk about interactions with the police as I give other examples of how black people so frequently come in contact with law enforcement, even when doing the same things as others. Let's start with drugs. We know that white people use drugs at similar rates as black people, but black people get punished more. Which, by the way, we think of drug dealers as these people and not these people, but whatever. Famously, when New York City was still implementing its stop and frisk policy, white people were found to have drug paraphernalia and weapons at similar rates as black and brown people, but were stopped, frisked, and searched far less. Furthermore, there's a lesser known Stanford study that says black people who are pulled over more frequently than white people during the day are much less likely to be stopped after sunset when a veil of darkness masks our skin color. Did you hear what I just said to you? A five year study that analyzed 95 million traffic stop records suggests that black people are pulled over less at night when it's harder to discern race. But black people don't even need a human person police officer to know racial disparities. A recent study presented by ProPublica not only revealed that Chicago's race neutral traffic cameras ticket black and Latino drivers the most, but it may be because of environmental racism or issues in black communities. Residential density is another factor. Denser neighborhoods have more cars, more traffic, and more pedestrians, all factors that cause motorists to intuitively slow down, along with the fact that black neighborhoods in Chicago were more likely to be near highway entrance and exit ramps. I hope we're not wondering if black people drive worse because any people of any color would drive similarly under these circumstances, but we know a lot of people avoid black neighborhoods. Some simply have better options and opportunities to make better choices or are met with different consequences for making the same choice like these teens fighting in the mall. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.